and welcome to my daily chat. This is a bit earlier than usual, just in case you're wondering why is it three o'clock instead of five o'clock as my usual time. Of course, if you're watching in replay, you won't care about that, which is actually kind of relevant to the topic today. So today, episode 917, the topic today is there's no time like the present. A spiritual practice worth being versus doing. I'm going to explain all about that in a moment. I'm actually diving into some very spiritual stuff because I had some really good insights today in another um, conference I was in. So I want to share that with you. Before I jump into all of that, let me choose myself and uh, this will make sense in a moment. Hi, my name is Barry Selby. I'm an inspirational speaker, spiritual guide, especially in this talk. Hint, hint. <laughs> love and relationships expert and the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, but for singles and, cu singles and couples, men and women. I help women create balance in love, life and business because I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine. That's also what informs my work and also what called inspired, inspired these talks, I would say provoked these talks, inspired these talks three years ago. And now we're episode number 917 of Messages from the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. That's what the abbreviation kind of means. So today's topic is about the present moment. You know, there's no time like the present. That's real. And I'm going to explain what I mean literally and figuratively and directionally. All three, I think. And also give you some tips about how to be in that now. It is spiritual practice worth being. Simply put, there is no time except now. I mean, I said I was doing my talk at 3 p.m. instead of 5 p.m. Well, 5 p.m. is not here. It's a fictitious imagination that might show up when, time, when now moves two hours ahead, if that makes any sense. So what I'm attempting to relate to you is, and I was, I was actually on a bike ride, so I'm a little bit still schwitzing uh, a little bit. Um, I was bike riding earlier, and in the bike ride, I was really getting clear in the visceral movement of riding my bike and pedaling and the wind and the cars, everything else. It's a very good practice about being in the moment. It's very hard to be distracted when you're riding, riding a bike along major arterial roads with cars whizzing by and car doors opening and other people. It keeps you really in the moment, which is what the reality is. For many people, and you might be one of the people caught by this, and I've been there myself, just to be transparent. Um, it's sometimes easy to be caught up in fantasy about what could be, should be, or would be happening, or what's going to happen tomorrow, what you're planning for next week, and what Christmas is going to be like, and, and so exhausted from saying what's in the future. Well, you might be sitting about, I wish I'd done that differently. I wish he hadn't left. I wish she hadn't left. I wish I hadn't screwed that up. I wish I had wish, 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 all the stuff in the past, or I hate that that happened, or whatever it was. We have a bad habit as human beings to keep projecting ourselves into the, this way, into the past or the future. I'm just using to figure which way to do this. When the reality is we're projecting from the same place, which is the present moment. As you're watching this now, or in the replay, you're still watching this moment in this moment watching this moment in the sea, double hit there. So what I'm attempting to explain, I have to go deep on this because I'm really stuck in this thing about this is the only moment there is because this is the only moment there is. It's kind of like, <laughs> it's silly to say it that way, but the reality is time is that fictitious in a sense, is that there is only one moment in time. And the one way I remember reading about it because I've been a science fiction fanatic since I was six years old, science fiction it was a great teaching about how to be... Um, thinking outside the box. And the particular point I want to make today is that one of the things I remember here reading about, which really fascinated me, the idea being is that we don't move through time. Time moves through us. Or I should say time moves through the present moment. Meaning that this is the moment we're in right now. This here is the present moment. Now it is again. And it's the present moment now. And the present moment now. And it continues in this present moment, even though the clock keeps ticking behind us. So, there is no past and future, there's only now, which is really kind of silly to say it that way, but that's the truth. And it's funny because I've got a friend of mine, um, Kat, who lives in Australia, Kat Dawes, She's, she was in town recently, recently, but she was about really about talking in the nowness of being in the now. And I used to joke with her about it, but now I'm going, but now I'm going, I get it. I mean, I really get it in another way. And yes, I know that there's, that there's also, if, you're in the, if you go to like spiritual bookshops, they're selling this watch, which has hands that go around and around one of them is, that around the, the sign is the word now for every single one of the 12 numerals, there's 12 nows around there, so it's always now. It's simplistic, but it's real. So my invitation to you, and this is something I'm playing with because I'm maybe teaching more about this as it goes forward because I'm really feeling it like in my face now because it's kind of up for me. Thank you, Stacy, for that one. Is being in the present moment, there is nothing to worry about. And this is something that I'm getting in another level and I've never got before, is that 
because we're in the present moment and in this very moment there is nothing to worry about, stress about, complain about. If you've been carrying around worries about something that's going to happen in two weeks or you worry about what's going to happen in the election in a year or you worry about well, just under a year, or if you're going to worry about what happened last week, it doesn't change that you're here now. And this, and I know I'm, I'm sort of, I realize I'm sort of paraphrasing uh, Eckhart Tolle's book, but I'm not, I, I, and I haven't read that for a long time, so I'm not referring to it, but there is a certain principle in there about how being in the now, when you are breathing in this moment in the now, as in this moment, breathing, and breathing out, it changes who you are. Meaning that it doesn't, instead of being spread out over past and, past and future, it brings you smack dab into the now. It's, and it's something I've been watching recently. I, some, I was watching somebody talk recently about the breath is the way to now. Pattern interrupt, that's what it is. Well, it's a pattern interrupt. It's also a present moment reminder is if you can, if you will, if you choose to remember, to breathe in, to bring yourself present, because that's what's going on. We're only not in the present because of this. Our heart doesn't move from the present moment. It breathes, it, it beats, it beats, it beats in the present moment. It can't beat in the future, it can't beat in the past. But our mind loves to play in other places. It's kind of being like a kid running around free without any control. It's fun, but it isn't necessarily effective. And so my invitation is how can you invite or bring yourself present, which is, to be honest, the simplest way of doing it is to take a conscious breath, breathing in and breathing out. Because when you do, it slows this down enough. We can say, whoa, hold on a second, let's stay here. Now, as my friend Stacy was saying earlier, which I listened to one of her, she did a couple of talks today, um, was about how the stillness that we can have when we stop running around, when we can be in the present moment and breathe in and be in this present space is when we can listen in and we can be an observer and witness what's going on. One of my, I won't say a gift, it's something that's happened for me a lot over the last 15, 20 years, is I've grown a very, and I'm not, and I'm not so trying to put an ego thing on this, but I have become very good at witnessing. I sort of observe what's going on without judgment and without invested. It's, it, it may be, some people call it being aloof, <laughs> years and years ago, but I realize it's a skill I have, which is to be able to, to observe things so I can be not so much objective, but just be present. And if you want to be less um, at the whim of everything around you, and I did talk, did talk about codependency a few days ago, about how it's like having puppet strings you give to somebody else. If you want to be free of that puppet string mentality with anybody, not just your romantic partner, but anybody, bringing yourself present is one of the ways to do it. Bringing yourself into this present moment is how you really reconnect back to yourself. And again, as I said, the heart doesn't move from the now. It's only a mind that tries to do that. And it tries by pretending illusions and fantasies about things outside of this moment. You fantasize about the future, or you maybe fantasize, or maybe just judge about the past. Those two um, resources are not where we live. You can resource stuff there, yes, but you can't change anything there. The only thing you can change is the present moment, which is changing your state. You can change how you feel. You can change how you participate in the present moment. So I'm not sure if there's any direction to this as much as a reminder, an invitation, an encouragement. But in my work now more and more, I'm seeing how so much of my work with my clients has been looking back history, seeing the past, yes, I know, is watching how they live in their past. And how a lot of times I'm working with my clients is how to actually bring them present by bringing them into their heart, bringing them into their loving. And as it's interesting, I'm watching that in one way as a spiritual thing, I'm just bringing them present to the present moment, that's all I'm doing. But on the emotional level, I'm helping them by helping them love themselves, heal their hearts, become engaged with who they are in the present moment. So there's two different parts. One is the simple mechanics of bringing from past into mo the present moment. The second part is to bring their heart into wholeness with themselves and to heal their judgments and beliefs so they can become integrated once again. For some people, it's easier than others. Now, I've, I've been practicing, studying, learning, messing up, doing again, trying to do stuff from over 30 years, well, mid since 84. So it's been... 35 years now. So I, I figure I'm getting better at it now, but I'm hoping you'll get this faster than I did. <laughs> um, if you want help with this, I can help, but it's gonna require you to be willing to be in the moment to reach out and ask. So instead of distracting and swiping and going on the next few different 
Facebook Lives or Facebook posts, are you willing to reach out and get help? Are you willing to, in that moment or in this moment, in this moment, contact me for support? If you want to, you can. I will put some links in the comments because this is something that I know will be relevant. Um, because I, and it's funny, I keep talking about this, the self-love piece I keep talking about, the self-love meditation, which I'm adamant about. The, f the two five-minute meditations are practices that bring you present. That's a side effect of what they're about. They're intended to help you love yourself and build new structures inside your own wiring to become more self-loving, self-supportive. But the side effect is you come present. The side effect is you regain your composure of who you are in this present moment. And yes, the, the morning one has an intention-setting pro process practice in it and the evening one has a gratitude practice built into it as well but both of them at the same time even though they're only five minutes long those five minutes are spent being present 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 so another reason why my self-love meditate self-love guided meditation will rock your life when you get it now <laughs> so i think I'm, i've made up my point clear enough i'm going to go deeper on this i know i, I did a talk earlier in, in a group I'm in which inspired this talk so lots of things today have been contriving for me to speak to this point so I'm doing this early because I have to be out of here today I'm just going to be seeing a couple of friends of mine who are Facebook live friends um, in person um, this afternoon so I'll be there rather than on my Facebook lives I'm doing it a bit earlier than usual so speaking of which so again there'll be a link in the comments for my, my self-love meditation so you can get some help with that um, this is my Facebook live that I normally do normally do at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day of the week I'll do it at 5 p.m. tomorrow back to normal on my personal page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby. Replay will go onto my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby author. You can watch the replays on my personal page, but there's other stuff posted as well because that's the way my life is. If you go to um, my business business page again, which is Barry Selby author, you can watch my broadcast there. Most of them are out there, not all, all of them. You can like my page, please. I'd like to get more followers on my page. You'd also find them on my YouTube channel. If you go to youtube.com slash user slash Barry Selby, you can subscribe to my channel. And on there is all of these in a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. So all 917 broadcasts are out there. We're 916 plus this one in a moment. So this is um, my resource library archive. You can peruse and browse and watch all the broadcasts anytime you want. Search for titles, keywords, etc., etc. I invite you to play with the idea of being present in the now. Breathe into the present moment. Breathe in and breathe out in the present moment to bring yourself present. It's something I need to practice myself, so I'm not saying I'm immune to this, but I'm getting better at remembering. I invite you to do the same thing. Be present with yourself, watch everything change, because when you stop being run by what's out there, you start being present to what's in here, and that is a game changer for most people. So with that, I thank you for watching. Appreciate you being with me as always. If you want to have questions, comments, please put them below and I'll respond when I sign off. If you want to share it out, please do that as well. And uh, that's about it. I thank you for watching. I hope this has been of help to you. And as always, please take care of yourself. I'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.